up everybody it's your boy the kryptonian saying here bringing you a review for one piece chapter 507 kizaru how strong is this guy because we see him just casually kick the air and it looks like some type of flash came out of his foot and the mangrove just blows up snaps in half and kizaru says oh i guess i went a wee bit too far i'm going to a wee bit, you could have just blown up the whole fucking harbor. What the fuck are you doing? Like, this dude's nuts. Like, this dude is like if Luffy became an admiral. Like, I, I'm i mind blown how powerful he is. And yet, I know I shouldn't be because Aokiji was fucking strong. Aokiji was strong. So, it makes sense the other two admirals are this powerful as well. Like, he just casually did it. Like... Just like how Aokiji casually froze the ocean. I am so shocked at this, man. So shocked. And the fact that Luffy and his crew have to wait three days for Raleigh to coat their ship. So they'll be able to go to Fishman Island and have Hachi navigate there for them. How are they going to last three days? Like the last panel shows us. Luffy runs into someone. We know Kizuru is just walking around asking people like, hey, there's something I would like to ask you right before you fuck shit up. Did they just run into him this early or did they just run into somebody else? How are they going to last three days? I don't I don't understand this. Like, I don't know how they make it three days. Like, did One Piece just turn into the Hunger Games and now Luffy and the others got to play hide and seek and everything? Like, it's like Luffy's playing hide the one piece, but Kizuru's going to hide the one piece up his ass. Like, there's no way. There's no way. There's there's no way they make it three days. Not without fighting. And maybe if they just ran into him. And I could totally see a situation where Kizuru ends up being a fucking dumbass and doesn't even realize that Luffy is straw hat Luffy. It's like, oh, yeah, you got a straw hat. Yeah, you're not who I'm looking for. That's going to be nuts. That's going to be nuts if it's him. Then again, it might be uh, Kuma. Kuma might have shown up again. Because Luffy, I don't think Luffy actually saw him. But I think that if it would have been Kuma, then Zoro would have had a reaction. So, I mean, this is going to be really interesting to see where that goes. Now, I have to backtrack and go all the way back. And for those of you who might be new, one of the things I do, I talk about the one moment that just blows my mind first. And then I kind of backtrack and go over some of the points that I feel like are the most interesting. So going all the way back, I love that scene where when Nico Robin asks Raleigh, she says, hey, on Sky Island, I saw what uh, Gold Roger wrote, and I want to know what the will of D is. Do you know what happened during the blank period? I love the fact that in this arc where we're getting all this information about how crooked the world government is, and we're seeing it firsthand, we're seeing racism, we're seeing classism, we're seeing slave trade, we're seeing government turn a blind eye to corruption, we're seeing so much. Now, we have Nico Robbing asking about the blank period and wanting information Mwah. this was so good this was so good like like i keep telling you guys the way oda writes oda just funnels it's just like you get a big funnel and you're pouring uh oil into your engine or you're pouring oil, uh antifreeze in it starts out really wide and then as it gets closer and closer towards the end it gets so compact it just all starts coming in. I love that that's what's happening. It's like Oda just reached back. I think Sky Peel was like volume 30, 32, somewhere around there. Because I'm on volume 50. So that's about right. 32 through 36, somewhere around there with Sky Pia. I think Ian's Lobby started around 30. Not Ian's Lobby. Water, Water 7 started around 38, somewhere around there. So I love that Oda just reached all the way back a few hundred chapters and just brought that in there. I thought that was pretty cool. And I love the fact that one of the things Raleigh tells her, he says like, yeah, I know what happened during the blank period. And I could tell you if you want. And he says, but it'd probably be better if you just experienced the world yourself. And he told Robin something that just resonated with me so strongly, man. He says, this is what I think. But when you get the information yourself, 
you might come in a conclusion that's different from mine. And it reminds me of what I told you guys about uh, when I was in college. I had this uh, graduate student that I was messing around with and, she, you know, in the history and everything. And one of the things that, you know, she used to tell me is what she loves about history and just doing the different research on stuff is what she interprets to be true might be different for me. And we had a few, you know, discussions and debates on different things. And what's really cool is the fact that Oda is showing you that. What's written in stone isn't necessarily how it is. Facts are open to interpretation. That's why you have what are called fact-based opinions. I can believe that the sky is blue. And yet I could say, yeah, it's blue. Or you could say it's blue, but there's different shades of blue. And, and now we're getting into just the big conversation. Like I love that that's what's happening. I love the fact that everything is open for interpretation. Though at the end of the day, the world government did some crazy stuff, some shady stuff, but it depends on how you view it. And it's Oda showing us that there are shades of gray to everything, even in what is seen as noble, what is seen as correct, what is seen as true. And I like how he just casually has uh, Raleigh mention that Clover was on the crew, and just like Luffy has someone from O'Hara as well. And I like how he just says, it's a shame of what happened to your homeland. I guess that's what happens to those of us who are too curious. And I like how Robin says, I don't want to learn anymore. I want to see things for myself. Don't tell me anything. I love that. You know, like that, that almost made me say, look, Nami, I really love you, girl. But this girl, Nico Robin, it's like she just stimulated my mind, baby. I'm going to have to go over there. I got to demote you down to side chick. Nico Robbins, where it's at. Like, I just love that moment right there. I thought that was pretty cool. And Usopp being the wonder kid that he is, Usopp says, hey, can, is the One Piece really on the last island at the Grand Line? And Luffy shuts that shit down immediately. Like, he makes Usopp, because Usopp was being genuine at this point. He makes Usopp believe that the truth question he just asked was a fucking lie. Because Luffy says, look, I don't want to know. That takes all the fun out of it. If you tell me where the One Piece is, fuck being a pirate. I ain't being a pirate no more. I will quit. That kills the buzz out of an adventure. And now that just make me step back and say, wait a second. I thought that he knew the One Piece was on the final island. And he was going to the Grand Line for this. And Luffy's just like, no, nah, I'm saying you got it wrong. I'm just on an adventure. The king of the pirates is the one who has the most freedom. And it's just like, okay, okay, okay. So if Luffy becomes king of the pirates, Luffy's basically going to say, okay, children, every day is recess. Every period is recess. Like, I just love this carefree, childish energy of Luffy is so contagious. And even Shaki says, she says, I think I just became an even bigger fan than yours. And that's Shaki's way of saying, Luffy, can you stretch anything else? My panties are wet. I love that. I love that. I like how when they depart, one of the things that we see is, you know, Frankie's recalling. It's like, yeah, so this was somebody on Roger's crew. That's pretty awesome. So this is who Tom, this is one of the people Tom was trying to protect. And it's just like, Tom built the ship that Gold Roger had. Frankie built the ship that Luffy has. So it's like Oda has assembled Luffy with his crew having some type of connections to the King of the Pirates. Watch the greatest swordsman in the world, okay? Watch Mihawk have been a member of Roger's ship because Zoro is wanting to become the greatest swordsman in the world. And we know with Mihawk, Mihawk has that title. And one of the things that uh, one of the things that Raleigh says, he says, "Hey, I don't know what happened to the rest of the crew. We just disbanded. We went our, our separate ways." And he's just randomly saying stuff and dropping names of people we've met before. So I can totally see Oda saying, "Yeah, that, that Mihawk guy. Guess what?" He was on Roger's crew too. Uh, that would be so awesome. And I like how, and I'm going to end the chapter review here, but I like how one of the things that Luffy says 
after Raleigh tells him, I shouldn't babble on about things that Shanks has not told you himself. Luffy says, oh, so you said Shanks will be waiting for me in the new world? I can't wait to meet him as well. It's like Oda has just completely dropped all kind of breadcrumbs, opened up new doors for new possibilities. And it's like, I can't wait to see Shanks and Luffy just sit down at like a fire or something, exchange a couple of drinks. Because when Luffy was in Romance Dawn Chapter 1, you know, Luffy had to drink, I think, juice or milk or something because he couldn't actually drink adult beverages. So to see those two with a beer in hand, just talking, laughing it up, and have Shanks say, man, you've gotten so strong. I just want to hear Shanks tell Luffy, you've gotten really powerful. That would do so much. And maybe that's just me kind of projecting, you know, my own wants because I always looked at uh, Luffy and Shanks' relationship. And maybe I looked at it wrong. But Because for you longtime viewers, you know that I thought that Shanks was actually Luffy's father. But I just want to see Shanks tell Luffy that because it's like father telling son, I'm proud of you. And that's something I never got a chance to hear. You know, if you guys have been following for a while, you know, I don't have a relationship with my father. And so when I get stuff like this with different characters, I just love those moments, man. I love those moments. And that's been my chapter question for you guys, which is what are you most interested in for Luffy when he hits the Grand Line? Is it meeting Roger's uh, former crewmates? Is it meeting Shanks or, and I know with this, you know, some of you guys are probably asking, why didn't you talk about the life paper? They're going to use the life paper to reach up. I'm saved that simply for this. Or is it potentially Luffy stopping his brother's execution? Because it has to be. Because if I'm not mistaken, the Navy headquarters is above uh, Fishman Island. So if they're going under, I can see Luffy making a detour, trying to save his brother. And if he goes to Navy headquarters, that would be the new world. So what are what are you most excited for? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you for following me so far onto this One Piece journey. Have an awesome day, guys.